Okay, here we are in front of a Doosan Lynx T20 LMS. We've got another LMS Y as well over the other side, which is in uh, down for repairs at the moment because it needs a new bearing in the driven tool turret. So what you have on a driven tool lathe is all your tools on a big turret like this. Inside the back you have a servo motor which drives the shaft through here, through a little coupling, through this part, all that spins around. Underneath this plate you have a bevel gearbox and the drive shaft then comes out from this direction from the motor, then that direction to your tool holder. Um, and then there's a little bit of gubbins underneath here to allow all these tools to spin round. Then the drive comes through your driven tool and then turns another 90 degrees in another bevel gearbox to face forwards or if it's a radar one it just comes straight out. Obviously all these little gearboxes and everything they're a bit sensitive to loads and bearing damage and obviously with all the gears um, if you run them really hard on really hard materials or you run it for high revs for too long they just the bearings burn out and die so you just need to be able to replace them it's actually quite simple to do what you do is you take off all these bolts make sure you note a mark across one because otherwise if you put this on the wrong way around you look like an idiot when you call up to one it turns out it's actually something else so you just take this plate off it's just got a little rubber seal underneath it and seven cap heads pull it off and you'll be able to see everything underneath Okay, and here is your little gearbox unit which we've pulled out. So you have an input shaft with a lock ring and a couple of angular contact bearings in here. Uh, if you look straight in the front, you'll see there's your little bevel gear. Um, and then you have your cross shaft which goes in through here. And on that cross shaft you have your other bevel gear. And then you have a spacer. And then you have the bearing. And then you have an end cap. The bearings are... These ones made by Koyo, 3020 3JRs. You can buy these for about £10, nice and cheap. I was recommended to use this particular grease because it's made for high speed bearings. And effectively, what happens is the drive comes in from the back servo motor into this gearbox, um, and that gearbox meshes with this gear and it sends the, the drive up the shaft, up that direction. And then this dog engages on the back of your driven tool and gives you your power. So it's all real simple, but what happens is um, you've got two bearings. You've got the big bearing on one side, and you've got which is this side. And then you've got small bearing on the back end. Big bearing goes on the drive end, and the small bearing just supports the back. But gravity means anything which is in here, any lube or anything, will eventually just pour out, and then it gets over hot and dies. And there's a duty cycle on this uh, driven tool bearing, so if you run it at too high a rest or too long, it just gets hot and it dies. So you can call somebody out and pay an absolute fortune to do it, or you could just do it yourself. So that's a little unit, and I'll put it all back together again, and then we'll see about how it all goes back in the machine. So just smear a bit of grease in. Don't overpack it, because if you overpack it, it will cause more harm than good. But you want to have a decent amount of this high speed fluid grease. <laughs> Try and squeeze it in on the bearing surfaces and the rest will just distribute itself around. Uh, to make life easier, these bearings sometimes pop off, so I've made myself some little pushes and these help push it all on nice and accurately because you don't want these off in all squiffy. Obviously, you, I've pre-cleaned all this and made sure it's all nice and clean and set up nicely. So I'll give the braces a quick smear of grease. And this one goes in from this way. And as you're doing it, you need to thread on the uh, gear. Because that gear can't go through where the bearing race is, which is uh, a bit of an oversight, to be honest. They could have made it a little bit simpler by making the gear tight a little bit smaller so it fit through. But, you know, they're not here to make your life nice and easy. So... There are two little dogs on the shaft, and those two little dogs fit on the bevel gear. Uh, so you just keep spinning it around and jiggling it until the thing goes together. I think I've got this slightly there. We go. Jiggle it down, that all fits in nicely. Spin this around until the dogs engage. and then it all presses in, and so. Okay. 
there we go. So what we have is we have the bevel gear all engaged and meshed. And then we have all of this nice and flush. Now this little uh, labyrinth seal effectively just tries to keep the muck out, but obviously it does a brilliant job. Otherwise the muck wouldn't have got in there. So we have the space tube, this drops in. Then we have the other new bearing, and this is one for a size the smallest from the least amount of lubrication. So smear a little bit of grease on this one. Probably put a little bit more on this one than the other one because this one is going to have gravity working against it. If it gets hot, all the grease will melt and it will just run straight out, and then your bearing will die. Uh, this just drops in on here and pushes in. And then there is also a washer, it's in a certain way. You can actually see on this that bearing got a bit hot, it's gone all bronze coloured. So, uh, there's your reason overheating, bearing side. This is a reasonably tight one, so you might just want to uh, give it a little bit of Just to knock it onto the shaft. Once it's on the shaft, you can check everything works nice and smoothly, that feels lovely. Then you have a lock nut. Now, notice inside this lock nut, it's got like little brass dimples. So when you tighten these O rings, if, uh, these grub screws, it effectively works like a lock nut. And there's a little flange on it, so put, make sure you put the flange inside. To the bearing and the laser mark side to the side. You can get like a little C uh, clamp thing to pull this, like you do for tightening up your tools. And this is just the reds on here. And then you set your preload on the angular contact bearings by tightening this up or loosening this. Okay, here's your little gearbox. You can see the drive dog is at 90 degrees roughly, and you can see all your your splines, your splines mate with the uh, uh, drive splines on the motor at the back here. You can see all your drive dogs aligned so when it changes tool these will spin around and then the motor engages and off it runs. So make sure this little plate at the back is all aligned so all your six holes are pointing in the right direction and then slide it in and if you're very careful it should just uh, Glide in, it's a really precision tight fit on this. There we go, got it in now. So that just slides in and spins around. Make sure that's all aligned. And this points towards this tool, directly in line with the centre line of the turrets. Nice spin into there. Doesn't really matter at the moment, because you've got to put these little quadrants on. The little notch sits at the top here, so let's get the other one, just spin it around, and put it on while it's upside down, and you can spin it back again. You can tighten all these bolts up once it's bolted in place properly. So just for the moment, we just get these all nice and aligned. And what these do, you'll see that they line up with the drive groove. And because they line up with the drive groove, they guide the driven tool spigots to go straight into the holder. So when it spins around and changes tools, it just flies straight through that hole and everything's good. Now you see, you spin that one back, and you put the second one on. That wrong way. Notch goes to where the lock ring is.
Okay. So the next thing you get is you get the big bolts. These just drop straight through the back. I'll put them all in, I'll feed them all in in a second. Okay, now I've got the first one going in, all the rest should follow nice and easily. And if you ever want to check and see the condition of your bearing to see if it's broken or not, you take this cover off and you look inside it, you can actually see it on when this one had failed you could see that the bearing was actually not sitting central because the cage had collapsed on it. Okay, here's a little internal shot. You'll be able to see this drive dog and you'll be able to see it spin round and you'll see it all locate and come to its home position. We might have to adjust it because it's got to be absolutely bang on otherwise it hits these spigots when it goes to do a tool change. Okay, because we put it in, it's probably going to be at a random angle, but if you look at this, you can see the drive dog is pretty accurately in the right place. We might have to do some fine adjustments, uh, but you can do that on the control. So you go to your control, you put it into parameter mode. If you don't know about that, I would advise you don't even bother, because if you don't know about that, you can destroy the machine. So, uh, it's on parameter right mode, and you press system. Might be different on a different machine, but this is how it works on my one. And then you use the across a couple of times until you see your PMC maintenance. Go to PMC maintenance, you can press this key a few times until you see keep relays. Now if you scroll across and you keep relays, I would take a photo of this before you start mucking around because if you type something wrong, you can't undo it and then this basically ruins your machine. So, obviously I've taken a photo of this so I know what I'm doing and you scroll across until you get to keep relay 06 which says down here first orientate for shift value. Now what this does, when it's normally zero, if you put it to a one when you go into the machine, what you can do is you can press the spindle button and it'll orientate. So if I uh, manually just move this around, so that's wrong. Then I uh, close the door um, and you press this button. The machine should... I say should. Ah, it's got to be in... Uh, Officer, I think you got to be in MDI to do this. There you go, heard it go. And it's moved around to here. So you can keep trying this until you get your parameter right. Now the parameter is, if you go to your offsets, plus, uh, where's your parameters hide? Operator, no, it's in system, isn't it? Parameters, here's all your parameters. So the parameter number is 4077S2. So, do -li 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 -li. blah 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 blah. As you can see, there's quite a few of them, they do all sorts of crazy things on your machine. Uh, get friendly with your service guy and he'll tell you what useful ones do. Otherwise, don't touch them. Four O's. Ah, I've gone too far. Four O. 
4077S2. Uh, one, two, four. 4077S2. So the position is 55. So if I scroll over to this, um, and I go up to this, and I type a different number in, when I go into MDI and press that, it will move to a different position. So let's go for, uh, we need to move it slightly towards the top. So if I type in 70, input, and then I go into custom 2, so we're on MDI. If I close the door and press that, it orientates, and you can move your home position. So what was that done? Uh, I think it's gone slightly the wrong way. So let's try again. System should still be on the parameter menu. Let's type in 200 uh, input. And then we go to MDI. Uh, I think what you have to do is every time you have to move it off what it thinks the home position is. So do that. Okay. And 200 has moved it miles out, so it actually needs to get it away. So we need it probably about 40, maybe 30. So system 30 inputs parameter. Let's just move it off its own position slightly. There we go. Okay, let's have a look and see how that looks. That's looking a lot better now. So on this side, you've got loads of room. On that side, mm, yeah, probably needs to be a bit more. So let's move it to one, maybe. Uh, 10 input. Custom two. Okay, so I can just do that. Yeah, that's okay. And I can get it in from that side. So because I can get it in from both sides, it means it's perfectly set up, which means that all of these will slide through perfectly every single time it goes to the home position. So then you reassemble the front cover, turn your parameter thing back onto one, sorry, onto zero, so then it's all alive again, and you've fixed your broken driven tool bearing.